In this episode, I am returning to Aqualand in Chicago to see how the lilies have grown since I planted them two months ago. And I'm going to watch them build a giant waterfall. After that, off to Wild Florida to plant up an enclosure for an alligator snapper. We're going to end this video in Iguana Land, where I'm going to record several different species of turtles underwater. Let's take a look. Wow, this place looks fantastic. Look at the size of those Amazon lilies. They just had three or four little pads when I planted them two months ago. And look at the way all the other lilies are blooming. This is amazing. The lilies barely fit in the trough. The pads are almost four feet in diameter. I remember when Greg was planting these just 10 weeks ago. Look at them now. The spread must be 15 feet across. This is one of the two wetland filters we added pond plants to. We decided to leave both the bananas and the allocations in the pots, and then we later installed the iris and pickerel weed directly into the gravel. This is amazing. That is Cyperus, Nile Queen, all those blue flowers or pickerel weeds. You have regular umbrella palms there. And look at the cannas. The cannas are six feet tall. Uh, you can't see any of those black pots anymore. This is filled in incredibly. Look at the size of those taros. That is Colocasia diamond head. This plant's going right here, right? We're dropping it yeah. straight down. And that is a red stem thalia, eight feet tall and six feet wide, all in a 15 gallon container. After we finished the wetland filters, we planted additional aquatic plants around the pond. Look at the spread on all these tropical lilies covering 70% of the pond and maybe a hundred flowers out there. That's black magic taro in the background and that's violet stem taro in the foreground. And look at the floating islands. Look how nicely they filled it. Now we're going to look at them build a waterfall with a couple of their certified aquascape contractors. First they put the liner down, they put the boulders in place, then they fill it with smaller rocks and gravel, they put plants in there, and then they add the water. I asked them, this was six tractor trailers of stone. And then it looks beautiful at night with all the lights. You know, I wonder if I could build one of these at Holt Nurseries. Do you see this area where Caesar did the turtle ponds? Well, I think I may be able to get a nice waterfall back there. Let's head off to Wild Florida. We've got to try Saracenias. What is like that? The pitcher plants. Oh, yeah, they would do well in there. And they're native to northern Florida. Huh. He has a bunch of That would probably look really cool in my yard. Do you have them at your nursery? I do. I'll have to come by. Yeah. I'll have to come by. Okay. <laughs> I'll have to make a trip. Because I would love to have more natives in my yard. Right now I have maybe like maybe like two dozen different natives that I've been slowly adding. Things like sunshine mimosa, the dune sunflower, firebush, different things. I did some sand pines and some magnolia and some oaks. 
but now I want to make more uh, of the smaller like flour and stuff. So I understand yeah. nothing of these words. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I it's just cool because nothing. like. I don't know, if you're into reptiles, you kind of got to be into the other aspects of nature to understand how just that one piece of the puzzle works in the grand scheme of things. Plants kind of like, you start with like soil and those microbes and work your way up through the food chain. Then by the time you get to the things that you love, like lizards and reptiles, you understand those better. In the alligator snapping turtle exhibit, we already don't have a lot of usable space. So if we don't put these in a separate water reservoir, we're removing room that the turtle would be sitting. And it's just an unfortunate thing because the turtle had to be put there because we didn't have enough spot for it. And that's on us, that's not on adding the plants. But if you put the plants, then this is two more spots the turtle can't be. If you want to put one behind the drain, like remove the rocks there and kind of incorporate it into that part, oh, I would agree yeah. with that, but I don't, maybe against the steps, I just feel like we can't, we got to be careful where we put it so we don't eliminate usable space because that turtle only has a certain amount of crawling room mm -hmm. in the water anyways and while I know the plant's going to benefit because they need that shade it's going to cool it it's going to make it look prettier I think this by the drain then yeah and then maybe one outside of it in the concrete mixing tub or do you think this pot's too big we can we'll go over and take a look yeah let's take a peek You could do red stem thalia, red stem thalia, Pontigeria cyperus, Pontigeria cyperus. So six plants. That sounds good to me. All right, so we just planted here the alligator snapping turtles enclosure. Uh, of course, one of the largest turtles in the world, the largest in North America. Here he is. Of course, his name is Bowser, like every other snapping turtle you probably see around. Now, he is pretty heavy. He's already excited. I just wait until he comes down. He knows I'm bringing him up. Okay, buddy. Okay. And here he is. Large turtle there. That tongue looks like a worm to attract fish. And then he takes advantage of that fish by, of course, snapping it in half. What do you think, Tom? I, like I always say, I think it's awesome. <laughs> there he is. And he's going to go over there and hide. Now, these guys are found in Florida, believe it or not. North Florida for the most part. Some of the streams in Florida, very rarely seen, very misunderstood, and honestly understudied turtle uh, of North America. One of the coolest turtles of North America. I mean, look at that thing. It looks prehistoric. It's huge. It lives mostly on the water, barely ever seen basking. Like These animals are incredible, yet not many people know uh, much about them. And a lot of people confuse them with the common snapping turtle, which is a smaller uh, snapping turtle. But this guy here, you guys can see those ridges that give them the name alligator snapping turtle because whenever they're floating and you see those ridges there, you might think it's an alligator swimming around, but in fact, is a large turtle. Cool, right? So if you ever planted something along here and then something on the other side, and it would, it would, make, it would make it more inclusive, like you wouldn't see the fence. Yeah, so that's you, what you I could love. So you could get more of these taros and you could get more of this alligator flag and then just do like a little, a little, trench or something right here and then we could we could almost hide this whole fence yeah that would be amazing and, I yeah. honestly don't like the look of fence for the most part so I try to hide it in almost every enclosure that I work in even the look of wood a lot of times I try to hide it with plants so I love that idea honestly so here at Iguana Land one of our top priorities is the health and safety of all of our animals and one of the big things we can do for that is to make sure they're in an environment where they feel safe and comfortable and we do that with our enclosures. So the places where we keep our animals, we try not to use the word cage. It's a very old style word and it really doesn't fit these places anymore. We use the word enclosure or habitat. 
Uh, these are as naturalistic as possible, as close to the animal's natural habitat. And in many of our enclosures, you can see we have running water, live plants, and lots and lots of space. So these are Midland painted turtles. Uh, painted turtles are a native North American species. And there are four subspecies. One of the neat things about this kind of turtle is they're the only native North American turtle that is found all the way across the country um, that's native to both coasts. The four subspecies are the western, the midland, the southern, and the eastern. So these are the midland painted turtles. There are five in this enclosure and they are all boys. You can tell that by the long fingernails and they also have very long tails. Painted turtles are known for their bright colors and patterns, especially along the underside of their shell, on their plaster on their belly. Western painted turtles have very heavy patterns on their belly. Midlands have a little bit, and then the Eastern and the Southerns both have plain yellow bellies, but they still have these amazing bright red and black patterns along the edge of their shell. And they also usually have either red or yellow stripes on their legs and heads. They're very beautiful little turtles. Uh, this is a Mata Mata. This is a South American turtle. They are found both the Amazon and the Orinoco Basin. And they're an ambush predator. They're gonna sit on the bottom of their pond or stream and they're very well camouflaged. They look like a big dead leaf and a big rock and they're just gonna sit there with their mouth closed until something comes by that they'd like to eat. Then they will open their mouth very wide, very fast and very, very big. And it's gonna suck up whatever's right in front of their face. I'm like a vacuum cleaner. And they're gonna swallow it whole. And these guys are part of a group called side neck turtles, which are found in South America, Southern Africa, and Australia. This includes the snake neck turtles, as well as some of the other side neck turtles that you probably haven't heard of because they don't have them up here in North America. And they're very cool, weird, different turtles. The bones in their neck are actually an entirely different shape than most turtles. They can't pull their head straight back into their shell. They tip their head side to side in sort of an S shape with their neck and tuck their head into their armpit to keep it safe, which is why they're called side neck turtles. This enclosure has uh, a couple of uh, common mud turtles and a common musk turtle. So these are native North American species. They're relatively small. And as the name suggests, these are very common species. And they're relatively plain, but they are, like all of our animals, important in their ecosystems. The musk turtles uh, get that name because they do have a foul smelling musk that they can secrete from their, from their cloaca, their vent. Um, when they are threatened. And they are also then sometimes called a stink pot turtle. Right. This is a common snapping turtle, Chelydra serpentina. And he's quite young, so he's rather on the small side. And he's special because he is albino. So this is a genetic mutation that prevents them from being able to make pigment. So his body is just the color that his scales are naturally when they reflect light. And his eyes are sort of reddish pink. You're probably seeing a lot of green and brown on him right now. So that's just dirt and then algae that grows naturally on his shell. So he spends most of his time in the water. It's totally normal. It's completely harmless to him. We do pay attention to make sure none of that algae is in his eyes, nose, or mouth or making it hard for him to move his legs. So as long as it's not negatively impacting him, we're just going to let it be there. It would stress him out worse for us to clean it off and it's just going to grow right back anyway. So as the name suggests, these guys are snapping turtles. They have a very strong jaw with a very sharp beak, and they're gonna sit and wait as an ambush predator. And when something comes by that they'd like to eat, their mouth will be open and they will snap it closed and grab their prey. These are some more native musk turtles. So this here, this is a razorback musk turtle. We also have a loggerhead musk turtle in this enclosure. As a group, musk turtles stay relatively small and they are native North American turtles. So that's also the razorback. The loggerhead musk is under the log over there. Yep, so this one has the two razorbacks and then the loggerhead is over there. All right, so these are red-eared sliders. Now, this is a native North American turtle. Even though red-eared sliders are native here in North America, they are actually not native in Florida, and they are considered to be an invasive species in Florida, and they are illegal to own, buy, sell, or breed. 
Now the exception is these albino turtles. Their bodies do not make any pigment. The color we see is just from what their shell and their skin is naturally made out of. This very light yellow color. And that's gonna make them very vulnerable in the wild. They can't camouflage. And because they're albino, they also have very poor eyesight. So they're gonna have a lot of trouble finding food on their own in the wild. You can see they can't even find their pellets very well uh, here at the zoo. But we do make sure that they have enough to eat. So because these guys have no risk of continuing to establish a wild population and become even more invasive here in Florida, the albino animals are legal. Other than that, red-eared sliders are now illegal in Florida. We will see you next week, and don't forget to like and subscribe.